excited. Uh, welcome, everybody. I guess we'll get started here. Uh, the old morning man, I'm excited to be here. I got here, uh, I don't know, hours ago, so it feels pretty good. Um, I appreciate everybody showing up. Thank you for all the continued prayers. Uh, uh, for Marty, uh, I did tell, I told Jamie last night uh, on the way home uh, from the hospital, went got a little bite to eat, and I told her, I said, you know what? I said, this is heavy on me, and here's my goal. And she said, what's that? And I said, through this storm and through everything going on, whether it be the process of the beginning or the process of what, what the Lord will reveal as the end or whatever it might be, I want people to look and see, because that's what I believe discipleship is, to look and see. And when, when, we're, when we're going through it, when we're at the latter part of it or, or whatever it may be, I want them to look and see and be like, you know what, that's a Jesus I want to know. Amen. So that's, that's, my, that's my goal. She held my hand. We drove home. You know, we just, it's, it's togetherness, it's, but that's important. It doesn't, um, he's, he's not going to use it to Satan. I'm not going to let him creep in that easy. He's going to have to do. He's going to have to do his homework. Uh, but uh, all right, prayer request. I know my cousin uh, Danielle. She's been coming on uh, Wednesday. She reached out to me today, and I'm going to call her when I get out of here, and we're going to pray. And uh, she just said she's having some feelings of, uh, uh, you know, just some depression and stuff, and. Her father, uh, my uncle, just passed away. It wasn't too long ago. Uh, so that could have something to do with it. But uh, nevertheless, uh, I'll plug into her. And, and that's so important. And I want to encourage everybody in this church. It's really been heavy on my soul what the body of Christ looks like when he talks about the different members. Never think you don't have something to offer someone. It might just be a simple word. It might be, you know, don't diminish what they're going through, but just... You know, be that, I don't know, this, that's why it's important to me. When I look around this table, when I look around this church, uh, even back in the James Bullock days, you know, Pastor Bullock, it's, I, I don't know, it's, it's unity. And I think that's starting to really come to light uh, for what I believe is a, uh, a new revival. I have one. Yes. I have a friend in the uh, Ukraine, uh, him and his wife and family live in Odessa. Well, he doesn't live there. He's got a home in uh, Florida as well. But uh, uh, for the last three or four nights, they've been um, sending in uh, kamikaze drones. They sent in 27 kamikaze drones and in on on them. And uh, anyhow, they've been under a lot of uh, bombardment of rockets as well. And... Uh, uh, you know, him and I, we were in Vietnam together, and he was telling me it's a, it's a lot worse than what it was in Vietnam, that, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff coming in, raining down on him. So if, if you feel it in your heart, and please, his name is Herb McLean. I don't know his wife's name. She's a, a, a Russian lady, but uh, she's Ukrainian. And uh, they have a little granddaughter, and uh, he has uh, uh, her mother as well there. So uh, they're riding it out. I don't think we appreciate enough the freedoms that we experience in this country. Yeah. Amen. We can just come Amen. and go and do as we please with yeah. nobody beating on our door saying, where were you and who were you with? You know, I just can't imagine living like that. Tripp was telling us Sunday that that in Bulgaria there's 300,000 Ukrainian refugees and in the town, the city that they live in, there's 20,000. Mm. And they're really expanding their ministry there. You know, when, when he said, I think he, he said it Sunday morning that English was his third language. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Bulgarian is his first language. Russian is his second because he grew up in Russian-occupied Bulgaria. And then um, English is his third. And he said they're teaching... English to the to the Ukrainians that come, and because of that, he's having to reestablish his Russian. Because he said he hadn't used Russian in years, but he said in order to teach the Ukrainians English, he had to start remembering his Russian. And uh, my parents, I would like to be able to lift him up. They're they're in a dark spot too, and and 
it's like, you know, I try to explain to them, just, just be obedient, just trust God. You know, none of us have the answer. You know, I'm in a tight situation, but uh, my God tells me not to worry. So I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about anything but being faithful and keeping my eyes on Jesus, because I know at the end of the day, he's got me. So yeah, my parents, Pat and Jay, they need, they need some, some prayers big time. I know Larry's on the list. Larry Johnston uh, took him Monday. He had a um, biopsy of his lung done. He may get the results back today, but his nephew's taking him to the doctor. So I just want you to pray for him because I'm, I'm afraid it's not a good result. It's going to happen, and that's just going to be another really hard thing for him. So just pray that pray for his um, pray for his spiritual. Yeah, amen. And I do have a uh, a praise report. Um, <clears throat> Ashley comes to our yes. church, the Felts, and um, and Robert, uh, you know her cousin um, Angela, uh, kind of took a turn for the worse. Uh, I believe uh, hospice and all that has taken over. And uh, uh, but but um, from what I understand, uh, she was uh, she was saved in the hospital. Amen. So, yeah. Amen. 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 I love that we. I love that we serve a God like that. I'm embarrassed to say, and I think she's told me before. I do not know her age. But she's the one that sits on this. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I thought you meant her cousin. The, the uh, one that's sick. Oh, the one that's sick. I do not know her oh, age. Okay. No, uh, she uh, that I know of. She's never been to this church. Okay. Yeah. That's good if she got saved. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um. Dear Heavenly Father, oh Lord, I love this table. I love the body, Lord. I love what uh, what you did at Calvary, Lord. You you did it. So for moments like these, for oh man, there's so many for Larry, for Frank, for <coughs> Pat, for Jay, for oh, Lord, just everybody. Uh, the, the couple in Ukraine and Lord, so many. That's how good you are, Lord. I believe you. There's a song I love, Lord. That's called "I Hear Them All," and Lord, I believe that's to be true. That if we just stay obedient, Lord, that I told my wife, Lord, that if you spoke the sea into existence and you provided us a boat, then why would we get so frantic when the waves start coming? And the kicker is you're in the boat with us. Lord, just uh, comfort uh, each need that's represented around this table because I know that's how good you are in a way that we might not understand but just from not minimizing where someone's at, but just meeting them right where they were. I believe Paul got frustrated, Lord, but he never belittled. Uh, you know, I believe he loved, he loved your people so much, who you call us children and daughter and, and warriors and ambassadors. And Lord, may we edify you in this time. May we dive into this word that's been set on my heart, Lord, just to, to feed one another. That that it can't stop because something's going on in my life, Lord. That that's the, just the total opposite. That in and through the storm, you're in it, and your lessons will prevail. Your provision will prevail. In your beautiful name, amen. amen. Yes, indeed. So, uh, I love this uh, because what happened, this is probably, I think, I want to say it's like two years ago. I'd keep, Jamie always gets after me because I never really label some of my, 
I do now in Google Docs, but in my notes, I don't label things. So I was looking for something like calm, in the, calm during the storm. You know, of course, it's in uh, Luke 8, and uh, it's in Mark, it's in all the accounts. Uh, and that's what I was going to do. So I kept, in my phone, I was doing little keywords, and nothing, for some reason, and I think it's because I put uh, Matthew, but for some reason, uh, this came up, and then I got so into it that it just, it, it literally started ministering to me. And my title is, uh, do I trust, and it's just, it couldn't have been more perfect. It's like when the Lord speaks th to you through his word. But it was, do I trust that God is sending me where he will guard me and provide me? And it's Jeremiah uh, 1, 4 through 12. And when I get to the, some of the, uh, like Matthew 28, I'm going to have someone read that. If someone wants to open up to Matthew 28, 16 through 20, we'll get to that in a second. But this is beautiful on just what the Lord will do if we're trusting Him, His provision. Because I, I don't know what you know about Jeremiah, uh, but some of his confidence wasn't the same as, uh, say, Moses and, and Jacob and things like that. So, uh, But check this out. I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited about this. Uh, and I'm going to start in verse... Um, Four, and we'll go to 12, but it says, and it's Jeremiah 1, and it says, Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I created you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Oh, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say, I am only youth. For to all whom I send you shall go, and whenever I command you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declared the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. Oh, I love that. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations, over kingdoms, to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see the almond branch. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. Man, watching over my word to perform it. So it starts out with word, ends with word as far as uh, 1 through 12 is concerned. So I just, I got, man, uh, I think y'all are going to be excited. I got a lot out of this. Um, and it's what God's word can do. Our confidence can be short. Uh, no matter how in the word you are, uh, th th that, that human flesh will still, those human emotions will still creep in and you still got to be. That's what I love about the position I'm in now because when people... The, the show must go on. Like when pe people are still, many people, whether it be in the, uh, in the program of Alcoholics Anonymous, this church, other, many people plug in and, and I can't tell them, hey man, I don't have time for that. Uh, you know, I've had a friend that was uh, borderline suicidal, prayed with him. I had another guy that texted me this morning and said, man, dude, thank you. And I said, for what, buddy? And he said, I'm just, I, I just, the word, it's just, it's awesome. And, and he's, he's kind of a babe in Christ. And I was like, man, yes, yes, this is what it's about. It's through the hardships. Paul says it. It's through the persecutions. It's through the... doesn't make it easy. It says, in James 1, it says, consider it joy. That never said get excited about it. I can consider what's going on joy. It doesn't mean I'm going to go home and be like, hey, baby, consider it joy. We're good. You know, it, it, we're still good. We have confidence. And, and I think that's where... Um, uh, what I'm going to dive into with uh, uh, Jeremiah, but uh, the first point I put, am I still fulfilling the Lord's call on my life? And again, this is amazing to me because this was written a while ago, but it was just so, it's exactly what I'm going through, I feel like, in my life right now. Am I still fulfilling the Lord's call on my life, trusting Him through obedience that His presence is with me at all times? And will someone read um, Matthew 28, 16 through 20? Uh, yeah, Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Right. Then the eleven disciples went away 
into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they said unto him, they worship him, saw him, they worship him, with some doubt. And Jesus came and spake, spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Mm. Mm -hmm. So there's that, there's that application, there's that applying it. You know, and, and I, I was thinking about that this week, like, man, like even with Triff, that really got me and, and the conference we were in and it's just, it, it's everywhere. We, greater works are thee. Like, what can I do to, and, and, and I'm sorry, because this might be more like preaching today, because I feel like, I don't know, just a words on my heart, but it's just, you see, you see these people going out and doing things and, and we just, we can't, we can't get inside our little shells and fall apart. We can't do it. We have to know. Yes. Um, one of the seminars I went to at the convention, um, Ruth McDonald was speaking, and she said, when you read that, she said, you know, you see, it's a command, go. But she said, you can interpret it also as, as you go. Yeah. In other words, as you go to the grocery store, as you go to, yeah. the, you know, as you go on vacation, as you go anywhere. You know, it's not specifically a command to go so much as it is to as you go, meet people, introduce them to Jesus. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Disciples. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I love that you said that because um, I had a moment at the hospital where I, I stood at, I was waiting on Jamie, which is kind of the story of my life. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's going to watch us and be like, uh, but, um, and I, I, I was kind of standing at, and I've heard some people and I heard some other people and there were some people of distress and, and I just sat there at the hallway and I just prayed. I was like, Lord, just let your goodness dwell in here. There's someone in these rooms that could pass away tonight and they don't know you, Lord. I almost wanted, I didn't want to freak people out, but I almost wanted to start going into each room. But, <laughs> you know, but, but, it, it, but it's baby steps because think about it. If he knew you in the womb, if we really believe we're chosen, think about this. This is, this is the kind of stuff that fires me up even when, even in sadness. If I'm really chosen, it says it in the Bible, he chose us. He called us for a, a higher calling, and that's what he's saying with, with what you just read. Then, man, that, that's fuel. Like, that's beautiful stuff. You can't just give up on that. Scott, going along with what Paul said about, you know, doing it as you go along, taking off kids. We went in the in McDonald's yesterday morning. And there's a group that meets there all the time, and they all talk and put in. This one lady is <laughs> quite a talker, and she was making a comment about uh, prejudice and this sort of thing. And, and God just laid on my heart to, to say something, and I did. You know, and I, and I think she and I both sort of, sort of came together because I took the opportunity and to put God into it, not just say words about one thing or another, just yeah. common everyday things, but put God into it, and I think it, it, it helped me. I hope it helped her. Yeah, amen. Yeah, there was a lady at the... Um, like Paul was saying, as you go along, that's right. do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's true. Take there was, every opportunity. There was a nurse from uh, Ethiopia, and we, we haven't had uh, great success with some of the, the nurses at the hospital, and, and I don't mean that in a bad way, I just think they're just so busy, sure. yeah. you know. Uh, and uh, when you push the button, God can come that quick. I can just pray and say, "Lord, I'm." In. But the nurses are not going to come that quick. So uh, Jamie's had to like you know take like Jamie's had to take Marty several times, and, and you know because otherwise it's just not going to go good. You know, it's it's, it's not going to go good. But um, but this uh, young lady, she was uh, from Ethiopia, and. and uh, Jamie was, had just gotten some news, and, and she just came up, and she kind of patted Jamie right here. And Jamie's taller than her, and she was like, it's, yeah, no, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be okay. And I thought to myself, wow. And then another nurse said something, and I was like, oh, man. I was reading my Oswald Chambers, and I was like, thank you for the kind words. Thank you. Because you just never, you never know. And, and, 
and that's the confidence we need. I've got to read this because it's really awesome. It says, uh, we act to conceive of a servant of God as being a great, strong, terrific leader whom nothing ever affects. And Jeremiah, the acum of human sensitivity is sanctified in this service of God. The servant of God is never self-elected. There is always this implying call of God. And it is always the most unlikely man, the unlike, most unlikely woman God calls. Jeremiah is not suffering for his own sin or because of his sensitivity. Or being sensitive, sorry. He is suffering because he has seen what Jesus Christ better than anyone that there is deep moral tragedy at the heart of human beings. Sin is not weakness. It is not a disease. It is red-handed rebellion against God. And the magnitude of the rebellion is expressed in the cross of Christ. If we're going to get near the threshold of what the agony of our Lord represents, we must get far behind the individual's small means, mean ideas of our own particular troubles and religious experiences. We must be made to understand what the position, sorry, what the positive vile evil of this world in God's sight is doing. We shall, and it's almost done, we know heart hunger and soul despair for ourselves, but we have ever understood have we ever understood what Jesus Christ wanted in his disciples to understand when he took them to watch with him in the garden? And man, I just, I love that because I think of that so often. Uh, there's something, i got to read this. It's really cool. Um, uh, and it's, I'm going to be kind of all over the place, but it's, it's when he's asking them, uh, what do you see in verse 11? But it says, uh, before you make an impression upon another person's heart, you must have an impression made upon your own soul. You must be able to say concerning the truth, I see it before you speak it, so that your hearers also shall see it. And that's so important, and that's when he's talking about the, uh, uh, the branch. What do you see? Jeremiah would receive a message to speak, but before he could speak, he had to see. And I think that's so crucial. And, uh, I had a moment um, um, with someone uh, pretty close to me, and, and, and they had kind of minimized uh, everything uh, that we're going through. And, and I understand it. Uh, I am sick of hearing it. I think it's a sellout. I'm going to say that out loud. Uh, I don't believe the gospel is a generational I don't believe the gospel and God's word can be an excuse for acting a certain way, diminishing certain things, and belittling people to sell out to say, okay, that's just the way our generation was or that's the way I was raised. It can't happen. Yeah. Uh, it just can't happen. Uh, uh, George and I spoke yesterday and it was a beautiful conversation and I appreciate it. Uh, good stuff. Uh, but I had talked to uh, someone else and it was interesting because they literally just said, well, I mean, you know, just, we're all going to die. Hmm. Like, I think to myself, back to uh, First Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians, the, the second chapter, where it said, he was afflicted. In our affliction, he comforted us. So now he's call, calling us to do the same. So if someone comes to me and says, hey, you know, my, and this has happened, such and such is not doing good. The simplicity, and I think it's arrogance, of just saying, well, I mean, or I get this a lot, and this is the truth, and maybe this isn't the platform for this, but I think it needs to be said out loud. How old are they? Uh, uh, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I, oh, well, I mean, it's not like they're going through you know, they got running water, they got, I just, I don't know, I just, I, I don't think, and, and Paul didn't do it, that's why he said clothe yourself in humility. I just have to remember, and, I, and I'm not trying to monitor what people say, it's not about that. People are in emotions, feelings can go everywhere, and, 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 but if, if your faith is strong, just remember, and I think that's what's uh, so important about what uh, Spurgeon just said. That was Spurgeon, by the way. The impression you have upon another person's heart. You must have an impression made on your own soul. So ask for that when someone's coming to you. 
In that moment, if someone comes to you and says, man, I, I'm just, I'm lost. I don't want to say to them, you're lost. Come on, man. We serve God. And you know the Bible. What's wrong with you, man? Like, that's just, I don't, I don't want that. Because we can all get into that. And I wouldn't even, I don't even know if that's getting into the flesh. I think that's just, we're, we're humans. I mean, Peter, you can go all through the Bible. All it means, Gideon, scared to death. I got the weakest clan, Lord. What are you talking about? You hear me mention it a lot, Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was like, man, some of those, uh, the, the, the prayers, and even Jeremiah's prayers, some of those prayers are so powerful because it's them just saying, like Nehemiah, same deal. Everybody's coming against him. He's got all this stuff's going on. And he's like, you know what? Let's pray. So, you know, when you're, when you're praying for that, also pray for when that person does confront you and comes in front of you. Just pray, Lord, I, I need your words right now. And that's why I love that that said that. I, I need you to, you know, he was giving Jeremiah the confidence, but he's given him through his word, through this word, we're able to meet people and say, hey, this is the word, this is the word of God. It's where, you know, and, that, and that's, that's what, just what Doug, what you read. And Scott, in many places so in the scripture, God has promised to put the words in our mouth. Oh, yeah, we he need. said, uh, yeah. We don't have to think up what we've got yeah, to say. Right. He puts it that far. Well, that's what I love about um, when he tells uh, Moses. Yeah. Uh, he said, I'll, he didn't say, I'll be your words. He said, I'll be your mouth. Uh -huh. And I was like, man, I love that. When you can get that kind of confidence on that's who we serve, it's hard to let something easily, like Psalm 1 says, like blown away like a chafe. It's hard. Doesn't mean you're not going to cry. I mean, there's been times where, you know, with, with Jamie, I've, you know, I've, I've sat in my truck and I'm like, all right, Lord, I'm calling on you. <laughs> and he's sitting right there saying, hey, don't yell too loud. You'll hurt my ears. I'm right here. I've got you. There you go. I think many times people say dumb things because they don't know what to say. Mm. That's exactly They don't right. know what to say, but they think they should say something. Yes. Stupid comes out. No, no, you're right. And I and no, and it's important you say that because I don't want to seem like I'm beating up on people. Yeah, I had I a you're uh, intentionally trying to be No, I don't either. You know, but they don't know what to say. And yeah. What does come out is not always the most comforting. Yeah. Thing. A lot of times it's what comes out is not the intention. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it's not the intention, right. it just comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. you just said, it just comes out blue. And then sometimes I have to catch myself. And I'll go back to that person and be like, hey, that was not my intentions. Yeah. That was just the first thought that I had. Forgive me. Oh, man, I can tell you right now. <laughs> Jamie and I have been together 26 years. At one point, I was dead. Y'all are going to laugh at this. I'm being serious now. At one point, I was going to write a book on the top 10 things not to say. <laughs> like, I mean, I had it down. I was your guy. Yeah, you all know it. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, it's a lot more. But, it, but, but those staple things not to, you know, not to. And, and we all know some of the, you know, some of the practical ones. Like, what do you think about this? Like, I, I remember a while back I was trying to get in my suit and I was like, man, I wonder if this thing shrank. And she was like, I mean, <laughs> if that's what you want to tell me, <laughs> <I'm like, "Hey." laughs> you know, so it's it's hard. It's it's it can be hard, but but so rewarding. Uh, and then I put, uh, despite the times we live in, uh, we do not get to pick our ministry's results. Uh, our job is to follow God regardless of the circumstances. And again, this was written. I did not. I don't mind saying this. This is not fresh. But as I was reading it, I was like, oh, man, that's just how powerful I believe God's text and word is. And it's, I mean, it's exactly the confidence that Jeremiah, that's why I love some of the openings to these books. Jeremiah, uh, Joshua, seeing what Joseph did. I love the part of when Joseph, there's many times it says over and over, I counted them once, over and over it says, and the Lord was with them. And he went here, Potiphar's house, the Lord was with them. Went to jail, the Lord was with them. Went to Pharaoh, the Lord was with them. That's just, man. Is there I, anything else we need? Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. It's just, it's fuel, it's fuel to get through anything, you know. And I put our job is to follow God regardless of the circumstances. Know that he put the words in our mouth and set the stage for us to trust where he sends us, he's already conquered. Uh, will someone read uh, Exodus? Uh, and I'm, I, I, it's funny because I'm, I'm going more to the the references than I am the actual text. But it's just it's it's just because it's so good. Uh, Exodus uh, nine uh, thirty three. Uh, that's misleading. Should be twelve through fourteen. Make sure. And where um, and Moses said to the Lord, 
See thou sayest unto me, Bring up these people, and thou wilt sin with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by, by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, shew me now that thy way, that I may know thee, and that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not of hence. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Very good. <laughs> he makes my heart. Dang. I don't know. I don't know about y'all, but I, I, I'm telling you, it's something about. And, and man, I love you, brother. And I'm serious. Uh, and I say that in, in a Christ-filled heart, uh, full of joy this morning. But uh, man, <laughs> God, man, that's awesome. Yeah, I just I love hearing. I love that. Thank you for that, man. Because that's, I don't know, it's, it's God's, we're always true children, but it's, and I don't mean to call you a child, you're not, man, you're awesome, you're a warrior in my eyes, but just hearing you say that, man, it's, God bless you, my friend, that's so awesome, and it's so great to have you at this table, uh, man, he's gonna, that's exactly what he's gonna do, <laughs> he's gonna prepare the path and send an angel before you, and this, like I said, this, this ministered to me so hard, I feel like I could do like a revival on it. Uh, because it's just so it's it's so true and it's so good. Um, we are ambassadors for Christ. We must share His words. Our task is to be God's messengers, even when the words are so hard to share. And that's just that's what I think's going on. And, and that's exactly why I think He's saying, "Don't be afraid. I'll, I'll deliver you," declare the Lord. You know, I got, I got this. And and it, it, and I didn't I didn't realize this uh, until I was reading it. Uh, last night and again this morning when he's talking about the, the nations, the kingdoms to, to build up, to plant and all that. Well, if you go back to, of course, Jeremiah 29, 11, that's exactly what he's, what's, what's starting to come true. You know, uh, I got a plan for you to prosper. Seek me, you'll find me. Pray to me, you'll hear me. You know, he's all, all that kind of stuff is coming true in his, in his ministry and it's, it's just so beautiful. Uh, just, it, I read in Oswald Chambers, no surprise, that uh, <laughs> I just I love us. Ed was like, "That's not a bad thing, bro." And I was like, "Yeah, I know. Uh, I need I need to branch out a little bit. I do some Spurgeon stuff and some Sproles, and and I love Paul Washer, but uh, and of course MacArthur. But um, I I love when he says he sees. Let me see what it was. Hold on. I think I still remember it. I think it was the twenty eighth. It's one second. I gotta pull it up. It's too good not to share. July, I'm almost positive it was the 28th. I can't remember where I put my keys, but I can remember this. <laughs> uh, there it is, right there. What people call preparation, God sees as the goal itself. So it's believing in the provision that He's already provided. It almost sounds confusing, but does it? It's already set. Whether you're frantic, no matter what you're going through, it's already set. When my mom was passing, guess what? He's already said it. No, what do you mean? What are you talking about? She died. Yeah, but he prepared a place. Amen. There's always, with obedience to the Lord, there's always provision. I knew you in the womb. If I knew you in the, think about this. If, if he knew us in the womb, if we're truly chosen, all of a sudden now at 49, he's going to drop me up. No, no, just the opposite. Keep pressing forward, Paul said. Onward. I love when he says that entangled soldier. You know, I, I love stuff like that because it just, it, it does. It, it hypes me up, but in a good way, you know. Um, there was something I wanted. I know we're, I'm getting a little bit behind on time, so I'm going to skip some stuff, but I have to read this. It says, uh, when you realize the divine purpose behind your life, you will never say again, I am so weak. You will know you are, but you will be strong in His strength. The only strength we have, the strength of God, which comes to us from the vision of God and His power. The time of stress in which there is no vision, no insight, no see in the presence of God is the time to stand firm in the faith in God and God will do all the rest. 
you're <coughs> true to God and your development in God's plan is certain. I am with thee to deliver thee, he told Jeremiah. You know, just man. Just, if that, 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 that plant something on your, uh, uh, on your heart. And the, uh, this, the statement here, the, the, and I don't know why I put closing, I was, maybe I was, <laughs> but to look for justice. We heard a preacher joking about that, about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, but to, uh, to look for justice is a sign of deflection from devotion to him. Never look for justice in this world, but never cease to give it. And I love that. Uh, if we look for justice, we will begin to grouse and to indulge in the disconnect of self-pity. Why should I be treated like this? If we are devoted to Jesus Christ, we have nothing to do with what we meet. Whether it is just or unjust, Jesus says, go steadily on with what I have told you to do and I will guard your life. If you try to guard it yourself, you remove, remove yourself from, your, from my deliverance. So that's the, that's the focus. That's the, the focus on Jeremiah. That's the focus that we must, you know, and, and like I said, this thing just administered to me, but I think it's just so, I love anything in God's word when you're going through something that says, it's done, I'm prepared. It's, but it's trusting that. It's being in pitch black, trusting that, hey, it's, the way is there. How can I not believe in the way if I don't believe that He is the way? That's the light. There's no dark spot that, you know, that He won't deliver you from. And why say you have faith and then turn around and stress out of something? Yeah, mm, yeah. And that's it. George and I were speaking yeah. something you similar yesterday. Out. Yeah. You're not putting your faith where it's supposed to be. That's right. And that's, yeah. in, and that's in Christ when he said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Mm. So if it's bad, it's going to be bad because we live in a, a very sinful and messed up world. Yeah. But that doesn't mean Christ is going to leave us. No. That's right. We had a uh, moment in the kitchen where it was snowballing. This, 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 we're going with this, got to get this, got and I just grabbed Jamie's hand, and I was like, hey, let's pray. How dare we leave him out of this? Let's pray. That's right. Because that's what it can, now, it, do I feel like I was, either one of us were losing something, not doing something? No, 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 no. But just, it's just, it's a comfort. He's a comforter. Lord, we're here. We don't want to take you out. At any moment, don't let us take you out of this equation, because when we do that, we, we're going to miss the mark. I don't want to miss this. I don't want to miss it for little man over there reading scripture. I want him to be able to say, you know what, man? I watched some people in that church go through some big storms and they got through it. So, you know what, mom? Hey, we're going to be all right. Hey, I can remember my mom sitting at that table. I still remember it at his age. I, or maybe a little older, but I remember my mom just, and man, when she'd rub her hands through her hair, I, I would look at her and I thought, oh man, I know what that means. That means there's more bills on the table than there is money in the bank. I know what that means. But I remember at a very young age, I was working at, uh, in Chatham, Virginia. I, oh, I don't think I should have legally been working. I was working at a, a factory, and it was tough work, man, tough work. And I remember going up to her and saying, hey, Mom, I got dinners on me tonight. That's right. No, 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 son, no. no That's no, right. No, please, yeah. let me do this. That was God. That's God's provisions. That was God stepping in, saying, we, we got this. It's going to be all right. And I love that. That comfort is, you can't Google it. You do not have to send me $19.99 a month. You don't, I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's just gold. It, it, it truly is a peace that surpasses all understanding. You know, it truly is. In, in and around the storm. Man, I love it. I love you guys. Uh, little man, thank you. I love something about... Hearing that voice, read scripture. It just it, yes. that has Amen. been that has been worth this whole study. And uh, Scott, can you imagine what an influence this young man sitting right here can have on the other young men and his friends? Yep. So I have I have to put this Fine out. young man. Yeah. So I have to put this out there. Probably about 30, 45 minutes each night. Me and my daughter sit and read scriptures, and just to hear her read the next. Scripture, man, it just brings tears to my eyes. I mean, she's eight years old, and here she is reading a Bible. And, you know, she knows a lot of Bible verses. 
You know, we were, I was taking her to the dentist today, and, and she knows what's going on. She said, Daddy, you know what? It's going to be okay. Because from what everybody's telling me, God's still going to take care of us. I said, hey, man, I love you. To yeah. Death. Yep. <sighs> Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, let's close it out. Uh, Ron, you want to close us out? Oh, dear. You're awesome. You're wonderful. You're great and you're good and you're glorious. You are almighty God. You're better to us than certainly than we deserve. You give us what we need and, and a lot of what we want. And yet, God, we still, we still take you for granted. Shame on us. God, we thank you for, for this, this book, this bread of life that you give us, your word, your love letter to us. And help us, God, to, to let it be in us, let you be in us, that we might live closer to you and be more like you be more of what you want us to be and less of what and who we are. Thank you, Father, for everyone around this table, for what they mean to you and in your kingdom and what we mean to each other. And for what we can be, and maybe we're not there yet. Lead us, God, in your path of righteousness and help us to be a blessing to someone today. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 My mother told me if you can't say anything nice, <laughs> don't say anything nice. There it is. There it is. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be ready. Yes. I want to be ready. Oh, yeah. I want to be ready. Ready to answer when you call my name and go back with